flatmates here at Trinity Hall and so we're considered a familiar unit and that's why we're not wearing masks but in any other cases please wear masks. Yep so I'm Senia and I'm a Russian Japanese. Uh, I'm Anata and I'm from Germany and Thailand and as first year students in the dual BA we're here to just offer our perspective um, and hopefully some helpful advice on the application process which we finished like about a year ago. Alright, so moving on to our course, History of Art and Architecture. Um, so this is why we're basically studying the first two years in Trinity. And then um, in our second year, we will decide what we want to focus on in Colombia. So you have three choices. Um, art history, uh, art history and visual arts, where you get to hands on, create something. <laughs> and yeah, have fun with that. And the, the third option is history and theory of architecture. Um, disclaimer though, you don't actually like have an architectural training, so yeah, yeah. it's just theory. Um, so for the moment, uh, at Trinity here, we're enrolled in essentially the same modules as any other single honors history of art and architecture student would be. Um, so that's primarily one um, major introductory course to the history of art and architecture um, that ranges all the way from classical antiquity through Irish medieval art, um, the Italian Renaissance, and then later on I think we'll be getting to 20th century modernism and even beyond. Yeah, and that's suppl supplemented then by um, about three more smaller modules um, which are kind of designed to give us the skills of art history. So that means um, how to read and also write our own academic texts how to analyze works of art and architecture, um, and also introduces us to some of the schools of thought that are sort of informing discourse in the discipline at the moment. Yeah. Um, oh. All right, so um, we also need to take languages. It's required for the Columbia core. And I'm taking the beginner's Italian and the Nazi's taking intermediate German. And it's better to take it actually in your first year. So when you actually move on to Colombia, you get a more um, diver diverse choice of yeah. other courses that you can take and focus on. Just tick off all the boxes mm -hmm. for the core as soon as you can. Yeah. Um, so at the moment, all our classes are taking place online. Um, and it's a mix of asynchronous, so pre-recorded lectures, which we can watch whenever we want to really. Um, and then synchronous live tutorials um, where we get to interact with our professors and other classmates directly. Um, that's a group of about 15 or so people, all the other single honor students from Trinity. Um, so it's always the same group um, and we do get to you know have some exchange with the professors so that's nice. Um, in total I would say that adds up to about 10 teaching hours every week. Um, of course in addition to independent work you spend doing preparatory readings or assignments, um, writing essays and such. Speaking of... So, moving on to assessments. Usually the professors would ask you to write from 500 to 2,000 words and that would be two, three essays for a module, which would be assessed uh, 30 to 50 percent of your overall grade. Yeah, so that's referred to in Trinity terms as continuous assessment only because it's not exam based. You turn it in throughout the course of the semester. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, something I would say that um, maybe I wasn't quite expecting um, for university work is that it's very independent, those assessments. Um, you get the prompt, um, the initial essay title, and that's about it. Like, we don't reference them in our tutorials at all, that you're just expected to work on them in your own time. Um, so that is very different than most school systems, I would say. Um, also, the subjects are quite broad, usually. You have a lot of choice as to what you write about, which is nice, but it can also be pretty intimidating when they just say, choose a work of art and write about the process involved in creating it, and that's all you get. Um, yeah. That being said, though, uh, a lot of lecturers emphasize that they're very much willing to um, provide answers or any other further support you need if you reach out to them and email them. Um, they're available for that extra help, um, but they're not going to give it to you unprompted. So, you know, you need to show initiative and 
seeking out further help. All right, so your essay. Um, the first thing I would say that you've probably already noticed is that it's quite a bit longer than both European and US style essays. Um, so you have that extra space. Um, try to develop your ideas effectively and not just fill up with random other information. Um, going along with that, I think just like the system or the, the program is a hybrid of these two systems, um, so is the essay a hybrid of their two approaches. So you want to keep that focus on the subject specifically, that sort of European style um, would demand of you. Don't go on any big philosophical tangents or anything like that. Um, but then also, um, along kind of in the US vein of things, um, show a bit more of your personal background in relation to these subjects, um, rather than just you know listing qualifications as you might do for a European essay. Um, so like for instance, we had like international backgrounds and we mentioned that. Mm -hmm. But even if you don't have, make sure to show that you're interested in like the diverse international aspect of this program because this program really emphasizes on the internationality. <laughs> yes, it's definitely important to mention. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Um, oh, yes, if you are blanking and if you don't have any um, ideas or need some inspiration, I think it's a really good idea to check out the program descriptions mm -hmm. for not only what you'll find on the dual BA website, because that can be quite brief, but actually go to Trinity and to Columbia's own websites, where they'll have a listing for the courses which you'll be enrolled with. Um, and there, the way I used that was I kind of looked for keywords or phrases that they really seem to emphasize to get an idea for maybe um, what types of ideas they're really drawn to um, and use those in my writing. <laughs> Another really good thing to do is to look at the like the websites really closely like do your research is there like a project that interests you or maybe like a professor you really like or maybe you'd like to do like some summer program in Colombia like mm -hmm. what I did I was really interested in a project called drawn to the page which was done by Trinity and I made sure to like talk about it and like give my own ideas on the topic. So I, I definitely recommend doing yeah. that. Yeah, both universities really pride themselves on mm -hmm. having like a really wide artistic um, sort of communal outreach to beyond just the program and the teaching they offer themselves. So show that you're interested in that and that you would make use of those opportunities. That can be really helpful. Um, another thing that's good to mention is careers. Yes, um, definitely. Uh, make sure to mention a career path. It can be a long-term goal. Doesn't have to be anything specific. We both said we we're interested in being curators, but like, who knows who you'll yeah. actually become. <laughs> so just have something in mind and you'll be good. Yeah, show that you have some sort of purpose in doing this. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I would really like to highlight is don't be intimidated if you feel like, especially with a subject like art history that's a bit more obscure, you don't really feel qualified to talk about it yet. Um, neither of us had taken a proper art history class before applying, um, and that's okay. Um, you're not supposed to be an expert yet, that's why you're applying right now. Uh, the way I kind of handled that in my writing was I tried to discuss transferable skills that I developed in classes other than art history. So for example, I, th I felt like the literature analysis I was doing in English um, that was quite similar to how you might analyze a painting too. Um, or historical investigations um, and the practices I was developing in history um, could be used again to analyze the story of a painting. Um, so find um, ways to relate the general ideas of art history even if you haven't studied them specifically yet to your background. But even if you don't include all of that in your essay, which you shouldn't, those everything else can go into your resume. Mm -hmm. So for instance, I directed a school play and I included that information. Even if it has nothing to do with art history, it shows like um, stuff like le leadership, which they really value. Mm -hmm. And also volunteering experience, like in a museum or something, would be nice. Mm -hmm. For example, like um, Anata also... I talked about, uh, I was really involved in dance mm -hmm. at school, um, and I gave a TED talk at one point, neither of which is directly related to art history. Yeah. Um, that shows like really good skills. Yeah. Which is what's really valued. Exactly. So. And you might not be able to fit that all in your essay, so use your resume as a place to supplement all of that. Um, yeah. 
And after you do that, make sure to have someone look through all of your essay and resume and writings. Like, even if you're a great writer, and I'm sure you are, just have someone look at it, like one or two or three people, someone you trust, and honestly, like, it's worth it. <laughs> Alright, so the last stage of the process is the interview, which if you get invited to do, congrats! Which will be in mid-February or late February, you will know about it, and in the March, end of March, you will have the interview itself. Yeah, it takes place on Zoom, and most likely. Yeah, yeah, and it's usually three people, so one representing Columbia and usually not the professor, but an admission officer, while for Trinity, it was the head of art department with an assistant. Yeah. Um, in terms of what kind of questions to expect, I would say they're quite open. They do try to structure it like a relatively casual conversation. Um, so they're not technical questions at all. You don't have to come having studied anything. But they will ask for specific examples that you can elaborate on a bit. Um, so, you know, come prepared with some works of art or projects or buildings that you're really excited about and be able to talk a little bit more um, in depth about those. Um, the other thing I would say is don't expect them to have read your essay in advance. I mean, I'm still not sure if they have read mine or not, but it definitely wasn't referenced. So don't assume that they know all the information that's in there. Um, along with that, there probably will be a question about, you know, your personal background and why that makes you suited for this program. Um, so again, you want to emphasize any international experience you have and have that all um, prepared in a very succinct way um, so that you can give them a quick history and not tell them the entire story of your life when they ask you. So, for example, some questions can be like who and what motivated your choice in the dual degree program and I answered my dad because he's a really big role model and I just got a bit into it and show like my personality which what was something that they were looking for. <laughs> Another question would be like... Um, yeah, one that I really remembered um, was the Columbia admissions officer asked me what I would add to the Columbia core curriculum mm -hmm. um, if I had the choice to. Um, so, no, do your research on the schools because I honestly didn't know exactly <laughs> what was part of the Columbia core curriculum. So, um, be better prepared than I was. Um, do your research. Yeah. <laughs> And then some general tips for interviews, I would say. Yeah, make sure to look at the camera. Like, I know it might be weird to stare like at that little dot over there, but do it. <laughs> yep. We often Maybe forget. It's world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, also, it's quite short. I think both of us were under 30 yes. minutes. So it's not a big ordeal. Um, don't stress too much. It's pretty casual, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And with that, take your time, I would say. Yes, take your time. Don't rush. It's better to take a pause and think through what you're saying before, like, rushing through and then regretting, like, blabbling everything. Yeah. Um, try to project, you know, excitement and confidence, too. Uh, don't be intimidated. We've actually met both of our admissions, uh, like, mm -hmm. the interviewers now in person in a different context, and they're really friendly, really nice. They're not there to scare you at all. Um, they're yeah. really chill. Yeah. <laughs> so why did we choose the dual VA? Well, well, I really wanted to do something unusual. As an international student, I wanted to continue it and like see how far I can go, basically. Yeah, and for me, um, as someone who considered both the European and the US systems and was really torn between them, this was great because I didn't really have to choose. Um, it really is the best of both worlds. You get to do both. And it also really happens to complement um, our particular subject, art history, quite well, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so Trinity, Ireland, Dublin, it's all about architecture. Everywhere you go, everywhere you look, you just see um, these amazing buildings. <laughs> yeah. And lots of galleries, museums, which are unfortunately closed right now. But when we go to Colombia, you get to see all the art there that's like from all different periods, modern, not modern, like <laughs> abstract, like you, you get the New York. You get the jazz, yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So we hope you're excited about your application and wish you the best of luck. <laughs>